So we are here today with Stephanie Bickel, and this is her lovely garden just outside of St. Mary's, Ontario. And she's created a, a really unique mixture of plants here. Hi, Stephanie. Hi. Thanks for having us out. No problem. Would you like to talk to us a little bit about what you're doing in your garden? Sure. So over here, I've, um, I don't really know what I'm doing yet. I have planted some raspberries and rue. Um, I do like to plant things for the chickens to be able to eat. So I've got uh, extra rural spinach started for them. And then there's catnip for the cats. Over here I have in my hoop house um, all of my spinaches, uh, arugula, various lettuces, kales, things like that intermixed with the sunflowers and the borage that just kind of happened on their own. And did you use some um, poly on this in the spring? Yeah, so in early spring it's poly, and then while there's still seedlings, I have um, netting that I keep it covered to keep everything out of it. All the animals that like to dig in the garden to protect it until they're a little bit stronger, and then once everything's established, I take it off. And I started some leeks this year from seed, which I'm kind of excited about. I've never grown those from seed before, so... They're doing okay here, they, they seem to like it. We'll just let them probably overwinter and then see what they're like in the spring. And all your sunflowers in here were volunteers? Yep, volunteer sunflowers from plants from previous years. They seem to just, some of them I plant intentionally, the rest of them just happen on their own, which I'm okay with. I, I like that whatever, whatever shows up, that's its home. So I have some radishes in here that I need, once I get this weeded again, I'm gonna start another another few rows. And then I have some beets and um, peas. But they all, they seem to really like this area. It gets quite a bit of shade in the early morning, so, and then it's a little more protected. And you've done some really cute markers yeah. this year. That's great. We had fun. Me and my daughter had fun painting, testing out our art skills. So I have lemon balm and various herbs spread out through the entire garden. Just some it's biodiv biodiversity. It attracts all the beneficial pollinators and, and the ones that um, are uh, predatory pollinators that helps with pests in the garden. Right now I have a squash beetle or, I, or maybe they're a cucumber beetle problem, but we're working on it. So I have some bee balm here that I transplanted this year. Um, hopefully it'll the, attract some more beneficial pollinators. Some really nice lavender back in there. Yeah. My lavender, I seem to, um, I don't know, I just kind of forget about it and it does its own thing. Just in the last couple of years, I've actually been pretty good at growing lavender. And then these are some more onions that I started from seed this year. There's a bunching onion and a red onion in here. So we'll see how they do over the season. And this year I have wanted to try growing loofah so we can make loofah sponges which was, will be a fun project. So there, out of 15 seeds, is, I've got three plants. So, just fingers crossed that they'll mature into some fruit and we can make those. Yes, and maybe get some more seed for next year. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I do do a lot of that where I, I will keep some plants specifically just for seeds. Mm -hmm. So I will let things flower out until they're ready and then I'll, I'll save the seeds for the following year. This is my new bed that I created this year just for the tomatoes. Um, I did a no-dig bed experiment this year where a friend of mine brought um, straw that had horse and goat manure in it. And then I covered that with a black plastic um, over the cooler, like it would have been March, April. And once it got warm enough, I had dirt delivered and I just put it right on top and it seems to be doing really well. It's, it's very uh, nutrient rich. I haven't added any 
fertilizer, compost, of anything to it. That looks amazing. So it's all, it's all getting it from the root, roots directly up, which is nice. And I have about three different varieties of tomatoes in there. Roma's um, old German. It's a yellow heritage breed. And um, the beef, beef steak, the traditional like big red. You've got again your, so your yeah, herbs in here. I have dill and basil, and then I always interplant marigolds. Um, there is some nasturtium. It's just starting. I started it a little bit late, and I think quite a few of them actually didn't germinate. I do have, it is very densely planted, but I do get in there on a regular basis and I've just trimmed beginning of the week and I'll have to do it again probably by the next week. But they, they're very healthy. They, they seem to like this spot. It's just enough sunshine. Yeah. I interplanted today some sage and basil, some lovage, um, some lemon thyme, trying to bring in more beneficial predators to take care of the beetle problem that I'm having. I did lose a few zucchini to them. And this year I tried the tomato cages for support to help vertical grow versus horizontal to give me more space so yeah it's it's yeah. a great way of getting more plants in there yeah isn't it? they look really healthy after their haircut yeah and then these are sunflowers um some of them i planted some of them are volunteers i have peppers interplanted with everything um green and red peppers and then i have some jalapenos in between the sunflower rows um cilantro this is kind of my salsa garden. Oh, fun. Is kind of the way I, I planted things, how I wanted to do canning. So, and I have uh, one, one cherry tomato plant that I got, and it's going to have purple. It's a purple variety. So I'm interested to see what that tastes like and looks like once it yeah. gets some fruit on it. It's started. These are a miniature sunflower. They don't get very big. <laughs> oh, chicken. I also started more perennial gardening this year with my fruits, so I added some gooseberries and currants to my garden. I have blueberries and raspberries and blackberries already. I, I would like to add more. And then I have my mint that is kind of, <laughs> kind of in control for now. <laughs> And more lavender. You can never have enough lavender, I feel like. No. And I use a lot of dill, and I really like dill, so wherever it pops up, I just leave it. And these are the mammoth head ones that I got uh, last year. And they just, they reseeded themselves here, so I've just left them. And this is my spaghetti squash trellis that I made this year. So... These are seeds that I started from a spaghetti squash that I got from the grocery store and I saved them and they, they seem to be doing okay. So I'm yeah, they look excited great. to see how much fruit I'm going to get off of that. I do already have some already started. You can see them popping out. Oh yeah. And then I have the odd just plant because it's pretty like my yarrow and another good beneficiary plant to bring in like parasitic wasps yes. and that kind of thing yeah yeah I like that combination of you you get the you know the fruits of your labor but you also get the beauty of the flowers that come from some of the plants and yeah I think it's a nice combination to see them all mixed together. I also do a lot of catnip because we have cats. So I don't want them necessarily in the garden wrecking things that I've, I want to keep. So I plant them their own plants. Hopefully they'll uh, 
stick to it. And <laughs> There's they one seem there. To, yeah. <laughs> they seem to just kind of hang out in here and haven't disturbed too much yet. My oregano needs a haircut soon. I will let part of it go to seed. When I have some time. And I planted some hollyhocks in here this year. I have had success starting everything from seed, so I was excited to see that they've all taken off. It's the first time I've had them grow from seed like that. Yeah, you have a nice row of them there. And this is an interesting thing here too. So this is the Amish broom corn. This is a new thing I'm trying. It's purely decorative. I just thought it would be nice to see what it looks like once it's full grown and it's supposed to tassel out really nice and have decorative corn. So it was, it was just a fun thing to add to the garden. Um, this year I did a lot of um, interplanting with chives, with my strawberries and my, any of my berry plants. They are helpful with your, with your plants. I can't remember why, <laughs> but I, I did do that this year where I planted everything anything that was a berry with chives or the onion family. Okay. And then this is parsley that just volunteered to come back again this year. So it did flower out pretty quickly, um, but that's okay. I, I'm probably going to start another row of seed and see what happens. And then I planted some fennel and some rosemary. Culinary herbs. Um, are good biodiversity in your gardens. So this is my wildflower patch that I just started from seed, uh, dollar store seed, <laughs> and I just let it do its thing. I like the look of the, the English country, like the cottages, gardens that they have where it's just a bunch of flowers all mixed in together. So that's what I wanted to create. Plus it brings all the pollinators to the garden and then I do have some mint in there that needs to be kind of taken under control it's taking over a bit I planted some more hollyhocks in here and they're like and the, it, the bronze fennel in yeah, there that's it just kind of appeared plant. on its own I don't know if it was in one of the mixes and then of course the the borage I collect seeds from that too every year and sprinkle them wherever but yeah each every Every season I keep seeds from all the flowers and then I, I move them to different areas in the garden. And then this was one raspberry plant that exploded over the course of three, four summers. Yeah, so it's interesting to note that this was just uh, this grass. Was just grass. Four um, years ago. Not the greatest soil. We um, rototilled up three sections and had some manure, horse manure added from a neighborhood farmer. Um, and every year I kind of plant things in different areas, but now I've decided I would like to just do, um, I would like to keep things where they are. I don't want to do crop rotation as much anymore. And I'm, I'm working more at building a perennial garden versus an annual garden. So right. it, it's, it's a little less work. And, and I think when you have so many different types of plants within an area, it's not like you're uh, just monocropping a whole area and keeping it like that. You've, yeah. got, you've got your herbs uh, with, next to your vegetables, and that's going to really help with the biodiversity and uh, hopefully no bug uh, predators sort of build up in one area. Yeah. Yeah, I think the variety not only adds to the aesthetics of it, but it also brings in, like it helps enrich your soil when you have different things growing beside. There's, there was beneficial companion plants that give to each other what they need. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm working towards that more and more every year. This year, I'm really working towards conserving how much I actually have to water. So that's why I decided to 
this was going to be the year. It helped having <laughs> having the apocalypse happen, as I like to call it, <laughs> where it gave me that time to really invest the energy into creating the garden I have always wanted. So I got on top of everything this year, which got me even more excited about gardening. It is something I'm very passionate about, and I could talk about it for hours. <laughs> I like learning about it. So these are onions that I actually started from sets, and they are a Spanish onion. So this is something I need, I'm gonna work on mulching soon, and um, I, I ended up putting up these barriers to keep the dogs from running through <laughs> the garden, which they like to do. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, so I have two of them that I set up, and if, I think I'll end up just leaving them for the whole season. And then I have um, blackberries down here, which last year, something, I, I learned not to put peppers and nightshade um, plants by any of your berries because they they transfer diseases in a, in a way. I'm not, I can't remember exactly what it is. So I moved any of the nightshades away from this area. I do have the milkweed just wherever it grows, I let it. it and then I put some rue in, which is a beneficial plant for the blackberries. There's some sunflowers starting on their own. There's a hollyhock in here to eventually bring in some more flowers. And then I have some more of the Amish broom corn. And then this year, I added this new bed with the cabbage and um, Brussels sprouts. So again, it was the no dig method where I just extended the bed with a pile of used straw and mixed horse and goat manure. And then I let it sit for a couple of months covered in plastic and then added the dirt to it. And I've not added anything else since. And I started all of these from seed. This is my first year growing Brussels sprouts. So I'm kind of excited to see what comes out of that. And then again, I have dill in here and some basil and marigolds. There is some nasturtium hiding in there somewhere. We've got milkweed popping up. There's some rue that I planted today. And then next year, well, it'll be this year probably. My next project is to start another bed basically where we're standing. So I'll do another mulched pathway. Along, a, along the whole, along the whole thing. garden. It'll be a narrow bed. I've, okay. I've just recently purchased two pawpaw trees. So I'm excited to plant those. So I want to make a bed of more of a perennial. It'll be a mixed wildflower, the pawpaw trees. Um, I have some irises that need to dividing up, so I'm going to add th those to it. And um, probably just some more perennials. I have some currants that I found at the front of the property that I'm going to dig up and probably transplant in the fall. So, yeah. We'll, uh, I'm excited to get started on that. Yeah, that sounds fun. So I got two different varieties. Because it does need a cross-pollinator, and I... They do both bloom in the spring, and I'm hoping it's at the same time. The, at the, the nursery, it wasn't very specific. It just said they bloom in the spring, but you kind of want them to bloom at the same time. Right. So this is a purple flower variety, and this is a red. Um, so what I did read about them, they're, you want to keep them no more than 30 feet apart um, for your cross-pollination. And um, and they're pollinated by beetles too, apparently. Oh. So where we got our pawpaws, they uh, told us it takes a few years after they start to bloom Before for the beetles the... That are attracted to okay. the scent of them. So what they were doing was doing a little bit of hand pollination at the oh, beginning. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because, they're, I mean, if you know what the beetle is, you could probably plant another plant that is similar that would attract them mm -hmm. maybe in in your fruit guild yeah that's a great idea 
So yeah, I might actually, like I'll probably transfer some of the strawberry plants um, next year into the, the new bed and um, some of the currants. And I did get a gooseberry bush this year. I'd like to get an elderberry um, and just keep building my perennial fruit bed and try to produce as much of my own food as possible. So, yeah, this is my my little teepee that my dad constructed <laughs> that I like to come and sit here in the evening, early morning, have a coffee, just watch watch nature, listen to the birds. Um, I do have some kiwi. I have a male and a female kiwi started. Hopefully someday they'll produce some fruit. Um, this is a, a mallow. It's a it's an Ontario native mallow. It gets white flowers on it. I started that from seed. It has really velvety leaves. And it just comes back every year. And it gets, it's, gets taller and taller every year. And then the daisies, of course, just appeared on their own. And I have some glads. A few other perennials. There's some cosmos and other mallows that are growing in there. Kind of just a mix of everything whatever whatever shows up i tend to just leave it and i have i have some mullen with oh, a yeah. friend on it so th some of these get quite tall i had one that was probably about six feet tall last year on the other side of the teepee where the um milkweed's growing and it was beautiful so I'm hoping I have some just kind of sporadic around the lawn. When I do my next bed, I'm going to transfer some of that. I'm, I'm hoping it'll transfer okay. I have some lavender planted in here and lemongrass. Helps with the mosquitoes. But most of it is if, like that's yarrow that just grew from the lawn that I just Right, just like a native just white left kind it. of yarrow. Yeah. yeah. There's a tiny little lupin in there. <laughs> the kiwi vine kind of oh, took yeah. over, so I'm hoping. I, I did give it a bit of a haircut, so I'm hoping it'll um, give it some room next year to to grow because it was a beautiful lupin at one one point. Yeah, the kiwi vines are really growing well, but those are your females, so, aren't yeah, they? So yeah, the, all the ones that are growing up are the females, and then the male... <laughs> this is the male. So, yeah. And it's you have a male, and your, yours isn't much. It's, it's gotten bigger than that, and we got them at the same time, yeah. but uh, so I, I don't know if it's maybe competing with the mallow? It could be, which was my, I think in the fall, I will move it maybe over to this location here where it's going to have more of its own space to take off right. and grow. And the males do, are, they do say that they are slower growing. Yeah. Did you get any flowers on your kiwi vine? Um, not this one, but there's one over the back patio that is, that's the one of the original ones we had. Um, it flowers every year. It makes a big mess, but it smells wonderful. And the hummingbirds love it. Oh, do they? Yeah, they come through it. They love that area. So some of these, um, like this, this kiwi, and the one over on the other side of the teepee are actually, I just cut shoots from that plant and added them in and they took off all on their own. I, I really did nothing other than dig them, dig them a hole. Was that in the spring then? I, yeah, that was last spring I did that. Okay, wow. They've really grown like crazy. Yeah. They're very happy there. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie, for having us out here. You, you're welcome. You're doing such amazing work out here, and I think a lot of people will be inspired. I hope so. That's my, I, I like when people get excited about gardening and making, making their own 
producing their own food. It's a, it's a fun thing. It's a good thing to incorporate into your life. Thank you.